South Africa was once synonymous with gold mining. However, due to massive industrial decline, many of the most productive mines the world has ever known lie abandoned and unused. The US Geological Survey estimates that South Africa retains nearly 50% of the world's unmined gold. In fact, Johannesburg sits on top of the biggest gold basin ever discovered. So with an unemployment rate estimated between 25 and 40%, it's perhaps unsurprising that abandoned gold mines across the region have seen an explosion in illegal activity. I heard some, someone told me about gold. There is something called gold. I wanted to know what is gold. <laughs> Kenneth Domini is a local chairperson for the Community Policing Forum. He regularly attempts to mediate between illegal miners and the wider community, as well as local law enforcement. There's three groups in, in a mine. There's a, a group they're calling themselves uh, uh, Swazi. The other one is they're calling themselves Sutu because they speak to Sutu. The others uh, is uh, 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 Zimbabwean. Right now they've, they've got uh, uh, AK-47 rifle, uh, R1, they've got all those things. When I tell them, guys, you get killed in that, in that mine, why don't you stop? They say, what are you going to eat after that? Uh, some of them, they refuse to work for them, then they just shoot them straight away. Underground in Bumalang, I was shot eight times. They shot me here, came out here, this side. This is a shot that went in here. The bullet is still inside, they cannot take it out. Went here, it came out here. They are vicious people. I don't know what can I call them, but they're, they're dangerous. This is one run, one run. I was born here in Chobek. Unfortunately, my parents passed away, so I didn't have any support from anyone. Doc is a member of the Swazi gang. He's been an illegal miner for six years, risking his life daily to try and support his family. As you can see, we're put on, on the locks. It doesn't waste my money that much. I don't spend a lot on this. She washes me first, I wash her after. We accept. If we don't have anything, we accept we don't have anything. Yeah. There are many women after my husband, <laughs> but I trust him. Yeah, I got a, a little bit of money. It's not that much, but for me and my family to 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 to, to, to keep going, it's, it's it's fine. We accept what we have. We don't accept what we don't have. We just do with what with, with what we have. Everyone is involved in this Zamazama, whether you're a kid or you're a wife, a lady or whatever it is, as long as you are being supported by that man, that means you are part of us. We work as a team, isn't I'm the conductor of everything. I'm the key leader. Yeah. <laughs> like brothers, we help each other. I die where you die, and he dies where I die. My brother, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> more fire, more, more fire. fire. The number of unrecorded deaths in illegal mines is unknown, but according to some observers, could number well into the hundreds. Collapses are common, as is sabotage by rival gangs. In February this year, the Swazi's mine was sealed with concrete by rival miners, trapping an estimated 200 underground until rescue services could dig them out. Several were seriously injured, and many were arrested as they surfaced. In late March, one of the chiefs of the Swazi gang was shot dead in a suspected assassination, striking fear into the community that the levels of violence will escalate. We've only one interest and only one exit. That's where we're going right now, to confess uh, what's going on underground there. It's best for us to sacrifice with our lives, go down there, other than going to steal, to steal from other people, understand? All of us who know each other. If they find you, they will shoot, they will kill you. What about your family? What will happen to your kids? You leave your kids uh, three years old. Who's going to support your kids? <laughs> These are not drugs, this is a leaf. This is a holy leaf. We call it a holy leaf, ganja, my man. <laughs> you want to see how it looks? This is how it looks. They call this Swazi stuff. When you smoke it, it takes you high. It takes you high and it'll keep you once, two pulls. Mwah. Mwah, yeah, okay. We're going down there to look for a sample. 
Hundreds of Zamazamas stay for weeks in the mines, living in darkness kilometers beneath Johannesburg. Nobody wants to die. You won't be afraid. You will just feel yourself that I'm working. I want, to, I want gold. I'll go there and take gold. Someone catches you underground at the very same time you're under gunpoint. You, you won't do anything. You don't have a chance. Whatever he says, if he says jump, you he ask jumped. him how high. I tried to run away, but I couldn't run away. They shot me on the leg, then I, I fall. Next to me, there was a child. Then they threw me there. One of the biggest risks faced by Doc and the other miners underground are the noxious fumes pumped up by the generators used to power the drills. With no ventilation, high concentrations of poisonous gas can accumulate in the tunnels, making them sick, dizzy, and causing them to faint. Fellow miners pour water on those affected to keep them awake. If they pass out, there's a good chance they won't wake up. Someone died from, from that, uh, that, that accident. If they were, not, they were not caught, I would have died as well. Have you got what you wanted? Yet? Yeah, I do, but it's very risky. It's very risky. The mine is most at risk of collapse when dynamite found underground is used to break down the rock wall. We are Africans, we are not uh, other countries. We are from South all Africa. Of all of us here, we are from it here. Doc and his friend Given take their sample of rock to a makeshift processing plant on the squatter camp. They and other Zamazamas work tirelessly to eke what living they can out of the rock they sweated for underground. I want to find out what's going on here. How much are we going to get? How much we work? We will save now. Basically what we're doing here is making the rock become like more like soil. But I'll take a sample of this soil. I'll pour water on the soil like this. And then this is gold. After that he pours water in there so that the soil will run down there. The gold will remain on these towels and then the soil with nothing will go down there on that, uh, on that pitch there. Once the gold is weighed, the buyer pays the miners with a street handoff. The price they get for their products at this early stage in the buyer's chain is just a fraction of the high street value for gold this pure. For this sample, after a whole day underground, Doc and Given earned only 150 rand, roughly $15. What I got from KC, I brought my wife a uh, sweet chili twister. Yeah, sweet chili twister. Um, some mini, mini fries. Yeah, I've got a couple thousand. This goes as a package. Yeah, you don't open a package. You <laughs> deliver it like that. Yeah, rule number one. The movie that I like, The Transporter. Don't open the package. No names, no address. It you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that, that's what happens to, to this. When you bring your wife something, you have to give her like that. It's a complete set. With the sauces, with everything inside. That's how it goes. <laughs> In February, the Swazis mine was sabotaged by rivals, trapping Doc and many other miners underground. Doc was injured in the attack, leaving him in a wheelchair. After one of Doc's fellow miners was shot dead in the street in late March, there are fears that the violence will continue to escalate. 